Using Blender to storyboard your short film idea is easier than you might imagine. G'day, I'm Paul Kajeji with CGCookie.com. If you like this video, why not head over to CGCookie.com where you'll find a wealth of tutorial content, videos, resources, as well as a community of knowledgeable artists and instructors. For the past eight months, I've been working on a top secret project for CG Cookie. Tasked with storyboarding a short animated film idea, I required a tool which would allow me to work fast, efficiently, and that would fit in with their existing pipeline. Now I'd seen storyboards done in Blender before, but what really sold me was seeing how sophisticated the grease pencil tool had become in the past few years. You don't need to be a great artist to use the grease pencil or to storyboard, but what you will need is a passion for storytelling and a tool which will allow you to express those ideas almost as fast as you can come up with them. Now, I'm going to show you some of the process so that you can see how I use Blender to accomplish this particular task. Any short film idea is broken down into a hierarchy. A scene is made up of shots, and each shot is made up of individual frames. A shot can be best described as a single, continuous series of frames. The moment we cut continuity, that becomes a new shot. Now the shot I'm sketching out here is the Wrangler having just zapped Melvin and he's standing triumphant over Melvin, who's face down in the dirt. Now I like to rough out my sketches and then lower the opacity of this layer and then add another layer to do a cleanup sketch. And sometimes I use a different color for this because I find the color coding helps a lot in this process. Now that I'm happy with the elements seen here, I begin the process of inking out my line work. I know I'm going to be adding some camera motion to this, pulling out from the Wrangler's face to reveal Melvin, and I would also like to add a depth of feel effect later. I'm going to switch back to object mode, and I'm going to duplicate our grease pencil object just to save ourselves a bit of time. This means that I won't have to assign materials or create fresh layers on a brand new grease pencil object. And just working in this grease pencil duplicate, I'm going to switch into edit mode. Hit A to select all the points and just hit X to delete. I'll go back into object mode and on this new grease pencil object, I'm going to relabel some of the layers. Let's duplicate this grease pencil object a couple more times and then we'll label each of them according to the asset that we'll be drawing. So long as you've selected the object on which you wish to draw, whenever you enter draw or edit mode, that will be the object that you draw on. Grease pencil objects that are blank should show that familiar orange dot so that you know that you can grab and move that around. But because they're overlapping, we're just going to use the outliner. I'll select the Melvin object. I'll hit my G key in viewport and I'll hit the Y key to constrain and I'm going to move this closer to the camera. I'll then select the fence, move that further back. I'll do the same with the background and the sky and moving them even further into the background. Let's select the Melvin object again and if you're not already toggle back into camera view by hitting numpad zero. Toggle back into drawing mode and let's make sure that on our tool shelf, our stroke placement is set to object origin. I'm gonna to toggle my original sketch back to visible. And because we're in the camera view, anything we draw on the Melvin layer will be positioned correctly, but we can trace over that sketch where it was originally composed. Okay, once we're happy with that, select the Wrangler layer. And we'll do the same for the fence. Now for the background, 
I'm going to switch my ink brush material to solid fill and select a fairly light gray and draw in our hills and bushes. And for the sky, I'm gonna create a new material. So over in my material properties, I'm going to duplicate that solid fill and call this gradient. I'll go down to our fill settings and change the fill from solid to gradient. And we'll set this to linear. Uh, in draw mode, I'm gonna select a, a box to draw out. Now you might see a slight gradient, but it's not looking the way we want it to. So we'll have to change these material settings. We can go back into object mode uh, and making sure the sky object is selected. We should see these changes take effect immediately. Now I've got my basic inks and basic fills, but this is good enough to now do our camera animation. I'm going to split my viewport so you can see what is going on as I animate this camera. I'm gonna move the playhead to frame 144. I'm gonna to stick to the default frame rate of 24 frames per second here. In my viewport, with my camera selected, I'll hit the I key and from the drop down menu, I'll select location rotation. I'll return my playhead to frame one and then we'll zoom in to the Wrangler's face. I'm gonna rotate this slightly so he looks a little bit more evil and set a keyframe. Two keyframes should be enough for this shot. Now that I'm happy with this camera move, I'll go into front view and complete the rest of the shot. Selecting the Melvin grease pencil object first and selecting the fills layer, I can add fills by going to my ink brush tool setting this to solid fill and selecting the color from my vertex paint palette that I want Melvin to be. Now, because the fills layer is set underneath the inks or lines layer, it's going to automatically draw under those. This layering order is only important so long as the stroke depth order is set to 2D layers. This is where you find that setting. If the depth order is set to 3D location, then the stroke placement in 3D space overrides what is seen in front and behind based on its 3D coordinates, regardless of the layer stacking. And if the layers should unfortunately occupy the same coordinate space, you're going to see some flickering. This is known as Z fighting. So for now, let's keep our stroke depth order set to the default 2D layers here. I'm gonna add another layer to Melvin and I'm gonna call this layer smoke and I'll set this uh, at the top of the stack and let's draw in some smoky lines. In edit mode, I can select individual vertices and with Alt S, I can scale these vertices to get a more random look. Selecting the smoke layer, I'm going to drop its opacity a little. Now I can sort of see through it, it's really nice. And now we can add some fun effects. Selecting the Melvin Grease Pencil object, I'm going to apply a noise distortion modifier and target just the smoke layer. I'm going to adjust the settings and then keyframe the offset so that the smoke appears to wobble. And now I'm going to add a blur effect to all of our grease pencil objects. Yes, you'll have to do this one grease pencil object at a time. We will tick the use depth of field box each time we create the effect. And you'll have to crank up the samples to get a really clean look. Now, once we've added this effect to all the objects, we can now select our camera, go to our final frame of the animation and in the camera settings will enable depth of field. If we scroll down to the viewport display settings and enable limits, this will show you where the focus is. We can scroll back up to our depth of field settings and we can either eyedropper select our object and click on the Melvin object and this large yellow cross shape snaps to the Melvin asset. It's easier if you just toggle the depth based on meters and approximate that. Now under your aperture, let's drop the f-stop until you get a satisfactory blurring of all the other objects. 
Of course, this depth is going to remain consistent with the position of the camera. So if the camera moves forward two meters and your depth of field focus point is set at one meter in front of that, for example, that will always be one meter in front of the camera. And so that blur is going to change and it may not be exactly what we want. So let's take this animation all the way to the front and we'll adjust the focus point to the Wrangler's face and add a keyframe there. And when we play through this, you'll see the camera pull away and the focus will automatically pull as well. And that's the process. We've successfully used Grease Pencil to create a single storyboard shot. Not to mention, we've added in a few neat effects as well. But I'm not gonna leave you just yet. How do we use this in the context of a larger sequence? Let me show you. Here, I've set up three shots. There are three separate cameras and a collection of grease pencil objects for each camera animated in sequence. I'm going to use markers set on the timeline to key points where the animation should switch from one shot to the next. I then bind each camera to its corresponding marker. Now, if we look in front view, you can see what will happen as you play through the animation. Each camera becomes active as the playhead reaches its marker. Let's toggle into camera view for the moment and play the animation through again. See how the shot switches as soon as the playhead hits that marker. This is essentially how our animation will render out. Now that's just a sneak peek at how easy it is to create storyboards in Blender. If you wanna learn more about the Grease Pencil with me, I have a couple of courses coming out later this year over at cgcookie.com, where I will take you through a full introduction of tools and techniques that you can use for your own projects and storyboards. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Paul Kajeji for cgcookie.com.